tutorial on uh, doing some searching from Solar Phantom. Hopefully you're following the playlist and we're going to talk about using the uh, Splunk app, which we already configured in the first video of this playlist. Anyway, so we're here in Splunk. We're going to come down and we're going to click Playbooks. We're going to create a new playbook. And I tend to, uh, there are t there are multiple types of playbooks. There's an automatic playbook and a lookup playbook and automation. We're going to leave it as automation. We'll discuss that when the next page pops up so you can kind of see it. But I like to label mine like this so I can see them coming up here. I might even do something like this at the front so that it always all, because this is going to alphabetical, make these alphabetized. And for some reason, bracket does not show up. I think it's lower in uh, sorting order than uppercase, but low, lap before lowercase. Anyway, it doesn't, if I don't put something at the front, it ends up getting lost here in the A's. You can see here I've got this little A. You would think it'd show up over here, but it doesn't. So anyway, the general principle here is if I started with triple a here that can will make all my playbooks show up up at the top anyway and i'm going to call this um youtube search and i'm going to well that's the name of it i won't find one called that i'm going to come here to plus playbook and it's going to say, hey, do you want to do an automation or an input? I said, look up, it's an input. Automation is the ones where you have basically they're your main playbooks. You'll run things through. Input would be almost like in the programming world, a simple function. You're not you're not nearly so concerned. Um, uh, you, you're going to do the exact same stuff over and over again, and thereby you might use an input. For most cases, we're just going to stay here with automation. I'm going to select automation. I'm going to paste that name in there. You need to name your, your playbook. And then you have to come over here to settings. And it's going to say, what labels do you want to operate on? If you've been watching my other videos, I've mentioned what labels are. Labels are kind of a pseudo meta tag, whatever you want to do to call these alerts coming in, these events that uh, Phantom Soar has. And the playbooks will operate on certain labels. In this case, we're going to keep it simple. We could choose events, event, you can pick multiple ones. I'm going to pick star. That means it's going to operate on any of them. Not a good practice, but this is for demo purposes, so I don't really, it doesn't bother me to do it this way. Um, and I'll leave everything else there. And then we will, basically the way you can put things on is you can grab one of these t uh, items over here and drag it on, or you can grab these little bubbles and drag them down and they'll build a little line for you. And when you get done, you get one of those options. And so we can take an action, call another playbook. We can write some code, utilities. Uh, I'll go into utilities later, filter, decision tree, stuff like that, uh, format and prompt. I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna use an action. An action is going to immediately bring up by app. And you can do it by action, which takes all of the different apps you have and takes their actions, lets you search them. But I can do it by app, and there we go, we see the apps. There's that app I configured for searching, so I'm gonna click that. And we're gonna do a run query. And it says, hey, what asset do you wanna run it on? If you remember, we set up an asset. I only have one, so there's my main Splunk indexer. And then I've got the ability to write a search. I can do different things. I'm going to do a search. Um, and then here's the query. You can write your query here or a new feature they've added since in the later versions of, I think it's 5, 8, and 6. You can actually do a formatted input and get a much bigger bar. And I kind of like that. It makes things a lot easier. And for now, we're going to leave the parameter out. We'll come back and use parameters at another time. But for now, I don't need a parameter. This uh, this little zero squiggly, that's relating to the parameter. I could use that as kind of like, if you're used to doing dashboards in Splunk, this would be your token, things like that you can pass in to create a little bit of random dynamic uh, content to your query. So it does different queries based off the data being sent in by your alert, by your event. 
but I'm not going to use that. And you need to make sure this will cause you problems. If you do not use, if you erase this 0, 0, you must erase, hit the X here and get rid of the 0 down there. Otherwise, I'll get an error when I try to run it. I'm going to keep this really simple, and I'm going to do something index equals internal. And I'm going to go head 1. Really simple query, not going to give me a whole lot of information there, but I'm just going to go to my internal indexes. That way you can run the exact same thing. Um, but actually, so that I have data coming back, I'm going to stay with my stuff. I'm going to go with Corelite, and I'm going to go table. And there I'm going to just, so I'm just going to write that there. I'm not going to do anything with display. I can set a start time and an end time. And this is epoch time. So we'll just leave this alone. You'll definitely want to get some time in there when you actually run your queries. You don't want it to run. I, I don't know what it is by default. It'll probably use the default on your, your uh, machine at at your uh, you're searching on but it's a lot easier if you can pass in an epoch time as a general rule i tend to send my events in and give them epoch time so i can just use this as a tokenized field but regardless um if i wanted to if i want to make sure I, I keep things really easy i can do um the earliest equals minus 60 minutes but it doesn't really matter because i'm not and I can set my stuff here and do a latest. But since I'm only doing, oh, I am not. Let's do a head one. Just want to pull back the first value. I could pull back a lot more, but I, that's not the purpose of this video here. Just want to keep it simple. So I'm going to grab head one. So time isn't nearly so important. Uh, do we want to run it in smart, fast, or verbose? We'll leave it in smart, but you can flip this to fast or verbose. Kind of a cool little feature there. And I'm done. That's all I need to do. This playbook is, this uh, thing is set up. If I want to modify it, I can just click on it, and then I can get all the other stuff here. I would recommend changing the name. So we're going to do my first query. Put some comments in there if you want. And so you could do stats, things like that. I'm just going to leave that alone. OK. And you notice it changed down here to my first query. This will make it a lot easier when you debug your code. We can actually see the playbook run. And so I want to make sure that it's easy to read. So let's hit save. This writes to a uh, internal git on your box. And so every time you uh, save, you're going to need to make a comment, a message. And I'm just going to call it init. I could do anything I want. So I could say start set up of first playbook. And if you're going to keep hitting save a lot, you just make minor changes. Go ahead and hit this reuse this comment, so you don't. Otherwise, you'll get this book, this thing every time you hit save. Um, I'm not worried about hitting this a whole bunch of times, so I'll just leave it as save, leave it alone. This playbook will save, and then you do, you can drag this to completion. Dragging to this end node is solely for visual purposes. Uh, Phantom is smart enough to know if there are no other nodes hooked onto it to go to the end node and end the playbook. But for visual visualization purposes, a lot of people draw it. Um, it's not necessary. And we are now ready to run this thing. So I'm going to hit. The problem is, look what I did. Because I made a change, this thing's lit up. I now need to hit save. And I have to put another comment in. That's the reason you would flip this little tag here. Um, drew a line. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself nuts having to write in a comment every time. All right, we want to be able to test this thing here. Um, and so the first thing you want, the easiest way, if you're really into your Python, you can just look at this Python playbook editor. This will tell you the exact uh, Python that is being used. You can choose to add, edit, um, customize your code here, make modifications. Um, I recommend, unless you really know what you're doing, stay away from this. It's Most of the stuff can be done without modifying the Python code to be, get, get yourself nice and comfortable with it. I just want you to know it's there. The next one is Playbook Debugger. 
and I can throw in a event ID. I can add this to new artifacts, all artifacts, or a specific artifact. I'm going to do all artifacts, and I'm going to pick an event ID one. I'm going to come back to explain where this came from, uh, but I'm going to pick one for the moment. And if I hit test, we can see the thing running. And let's look through what the, if you want to read the code, it did the on start, then it called my first query called. You can see run query, loaded actions created, successor released the lock, one action succeeded. You can see that it ran the query. Here's your GUID, run query, and comes back and it tells you that was your query that was passed in on finish, and everything action was succeeded. So everything went well. That's a good sign. So what what all did it actually do? And let's go basically, we won't do this on every playbook from now on, but let's talk through basically how Phantom does this stuff. I need to create a new tab here, duplicate it. And we're gonna come look at my events. We use the word event. There's different terminology that we thrown around but I'm going to call them event. They use here, my events, events. Events are items that Phantom receives. In previous video, I showed sending my first SOAR alert, and then this was already in there before. Um, and you can see that they have a number, one and two. That applies to the ID for these events. Now let's go into this event here. And now recognize this label, it calls an event as well. That's just, uh, coincidence it could be any label all of these things sitting here in this t uh, in this table in this uh, queue are events and if I go click my first ID we can see that there are timelines artifacts evidence files we'll go into artifacts here and here as well there are artifacts and these artifacts have a number and you can see this has a two this has a two. The fact that they're they're the same is a coincidence. You can have multiple artifacts and that will set your count off. And so these won't always match up. But in this case, I've I have two events and each of those events contains one artifact. So my numbering system matches. But the artifact has an ID number and the event has an ID number. When I came into here, it asked me, hey, put a event number in there. It's event ID. So I put one. Um, I could have done, I could put it on, I could do two. If I do a three, I'm going to an error because there does not exist a third an event ID with three. What it's, gonna, what it's actually happening is SOAR is going out there, grabbing that event and pushing it and its artifacts through my playbook, and then running those results on it. And so let's go back here and we're going to run back. We're going to go back to number event ID one because that's when I ran the stuff on, and ignore all this stuff up here. You can see that it created, and this is a history. I can see all the activity that was run on this event, and it's all nice and set here on this timeline. And the nice thing, remember, we wrote our a there's my AAA YouTube search. So YouTube search was run three minutes ago, and in that playbook, it ran the my first query. If we click to my first query, we can actually see my query and its results. And we can see we can open this up and here's the JSON object coming back if you want to manipulate those. You can just expand and play around with those. I'll let you do that on your own time, but the point is you can download the JSON, mess around with it. This is how you modify if you get to the JSON elements. Your stuff, here are my results. Here's that Splunk query that I can add this. Anyway, so there's the evidence from this from this guy right here, whatever. Uh, sure. Whatever. Uh, then we can, things I can do from this, I can mark as evidence, add to case, pin to HUD, repeat the action. We will come through that on another day. I just want to show the query is working. We got the data in. And let's just show this again 
This time I'm going to go back to playbook one in event two. We can see that I had this. Uh, I have a playbook that is automatically running. Probably shouldn't do that, especially since you can see it erred because it didn't know what to do with that data. Clearly, that's not the, the playbook doesn't work very well on it. Uh, and that was because this hunting came because of Splunk when I set it up. It wanted to set this as an automatic default. I need to go turn it off. But that's outside of the scope here. That's just me talking out loud. But we notice, OK, so you got this automation hunting but nothing else. We're going to come back here. We're going to flip this to number two. That means I'm going to run the event ID, event ID number two. I'm going to test it. It's going to run. And one action was succeeded. If I jump over here, we'll see that it has updated my history and I can see my activity. And there is the, uh, the query that was ran. It added it right along with it as a widget. If you make any notes, they'll show up there. Anyway, so the stuff's working. Just one other place I can do this. I can run plus playbook, and I can choose my playbook. There it is. Now I'll just click that and hit run playbook. It's now going to run the playbook itself over here. So you can run, once you have a playbook running, you can choose the playbook here, or you can go and test it inside as playbook debugger. Anyway, we've got the playbook working. It is querying Splunk. And so I hope this helps you. Moving from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja, we've now covered how to uh, basic searches from Phantom, and we'll continue to show more stuff that you can do with Phantom. And uh, I hope you keep coming back and watching the videos in this playlist.